Hi, welcome to CBT for Children and Adolescents. I'm Audrey Robinson, and I am an adjunct professor at Texas A&M University Commerce. Many of you are probably watching this for your theories class. And if you are watching this for your theories class, then you've heard me talk about this before, that all theories can be scaffolded to be more concrete to meet the differences in development for children and adolescents. Um, the best thing to do is to pick the theory that fits you and your worldview best, how you view the nature of the person, the maladjustment, and how change happens, and then scaffold your theory there from there down to children and adolescents. Uh, one way theories have been adapted is through play therapy, and then there are many different play therapy theoretical orientations, just like many different theories. Sand tray activities and expressive arts are other ways to scaffold theories. Play therapy is not simply using toys or reading a book or, you know, doing a worksheet or something like that in counseling, just as having just two adults talking out problems is not necessarily counseling. It requires special training, just like to be a counselor, it requires special training. All right, so we've got CBT play therapy, which is abbreviated CBPT, and then you've got CBT activities, which could be direct or indirect teaching to use with adolescents. CBPT is predominantly a structured, directive, and goal-oriented treatment modality that systematically incorporates empirically demonstrated techniques. It includes cognitive and behavioral interventions within a play paradigm, allowing the child mastery and control over his or her environment will be an active participant in change. That comes from Nell 2011. All right, I'm not gonna go over the right side over the CBT theory because um, you've probably either read this chapter or learned something about CBT if you are looking at this presentation. Feel free to review that. It's kind of um, a good overview of what CBT theory is for the nature of the person and the maladjustment. And pro tip, if you're taking theories class, this will help you with your weekly write-up. So CBT play focuses on the child's thoughts, perceptions, feelings, and environment, just like CBT. It also does this while providing a strategy for the development of more adaptive thoughts and behaviors. You kind of hear that CBT theory coming out in that. Traditional play therapy materials are used, especially puppets for role play and gradual exposure, and books are used for bibliotherapy approach. Play is used to teach skills, alter cognitions, create alternative behaviors, generalize positive functioning across various environments, and to reduce symptoms. Now, some of these things you're gonna, the next few things you're gonna remember from um, behavior theory. Operant conditioning should sound familiar from Skinner, 1938. Um, that is also used in CBT to do, um, to use positive reinforcement of those behaviors. Systematic desensitization from Wolpe 1982, which is based on classical conditioning, is also used for exposure. This typically provides positive reinforcement in the form of praise or tangible rewards, psychoeducation, affect education and regulation, cognitive coping and problem solving skills, calming skills, which might include relaxation and mindfulness. Some of those things are really big right now. Um, this might even include narratives and exposure therapy type in interventions. Exposure therapy is specifically used usually for phobias and fears. All right, the goal of CBT play is to change behavior by changing the underlying thinking and perceptions and altering reinforcers. This is basically the same as CBT theory goals. Um, goal setting is the first step in CBT play using measurable objectives that address what factors are maintaining negative behavior, strengths and weaknesses in coping, and other factors influencing the problem, like peers, caregivers, schools, home, all that kind of stuff. Treatment and prog progress and effectiveness are regularly addressed, and goals are revised with the caregiver, child, and teacher throughout this process. It's a constant monitor and adjust, monitor and adjust. It takes into account the stages of development. Those are also very important in CBT. All right. CBPT techniques incorporate the following CBT components, kind of like was briefly addressed earlier. Psychoeducation, somatic management, that would be like feelings in the body, cognitive restructuring, timeout procedures, 
contingency contracts, homework, problem solving, didactic instruction, behavioral shaping, modeling, guided participation, role play, skill training, and rehearsal. Role play is a big one with kids too. The child, therapist, and caregiver may co-create a specific behavioral contract, like a written agreement for pre preventing behavioral problems with expectations and rewards clearly explained. That could be um, a bonus piece to the above techniques. If you work in a school setting, some of these things may sound familiar, um, as may the behavioral techniques from last week. Um, a lot of these things are used in schools to modify behavior. All right, so here's the process for CBT play therapy. First, you teach the cognitive triangle, um, and this mirrors the process for CBT uh, with anybody, with adults or adolescents. So the cognitive triangle is the interaction of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And with young kids, you use like a three-headed dragon puppet, or maybe even a, the three-headed dog Cerberus from mythology. Then children learn how to identify and quantify intensity of feelings and sensations in the body through directive play therapy interventions or bibliotherapy. Next, problem solving skills and trauma narratives are explored through play, art, and drawing. And at each stage, homework is given so that the child will practice skills in multiple settings, not just in the therapy room aiming to generalize these behaviors. The child is praised for successful skill acquisition and positive behavioral changes are reinforced. As skills develop, negative affect or problem behaviors decrease and goals are met. Child, caregiver, and play therapist work towards termination, which is framed as graduation. That's from Drews and Cabot, 2019. Um, Drews and Cabot give this case example. Jasmine, which is a pseudonym, age five, witnessed domestic violence and developed symptoms of defiance, mild aggression, anxiety, and depression. During the initial stage, effective psychoeducation using dolls with feeling faces and a three-headed dragon in role play, along with a dollhouse, allowed Jasmine to play out scenarios from her family life while identifying and expressing feelings through her doll characters. Jasmine's mother assisted in identifying thoughts and feelings that preceded her negative behaviors and helped her use relaxation techniques like otter breathing, which is breathing in and out with the waves as the baby, baby otter puppet rode the waves on its mother, mother's tummy. Um, as treatment evolved, Jasmine used play therapy materials to reenact scenarios and verbalize witnessing domestic violence. She explored affect and beliefs that she will become like her parents either the herder or herded in relationships. During the working phase of therapy, play-based techniques help Jasmine learn non-hurtful ways to express her affect, along with systematic desensitization and exposure techniques to address separation difficulties. That's kind of an overview of how the process would look um, with a child for all of treatment. All right. So it's kind of hard to say exactly what CBT play therapy is because there's lots of different techniques. And so here's a couple of really good books, Blending Play Therapy with Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and then the CBT Toolbox for Children and Adolescents. Now, CBT often gets um, used a lot. Some of that is because that it is easily researched and there's a lot of research out there uh, like a state of texas anybody that's funded with state or federal funds often use cbt because it's evidence-based and a lot of people who work with children and adolescents gravitate th towards this because cbt is already a much more concrete theory um, less kind of amorphous or abstract than some of the other theories all theories can be made concrete um, and CBT has a lot of great techniques out there that often can even be borrowed and used into, you know, the framework of other theories. Just because you work with children and adolescents does not mean you have to be CBT. But these resources, if CBT is how you see the world, would be worth checking out. And there's lots of great things in there that you might use and adapt. Um, I have seen blowing bubbles for breathing in and out and using the bubbles as kind of like a concrete way to look at our emotions expanding and contracting and popping. 
lots of good things out there. If you're interested and want to more watch more, oh, this says Gestalt, but it should say CBT. I just forgot to change it in this PowerPoint about CBT with kids. Um, Pam Dyson, who's a huge play therapy group guru and has um, an international colleagues in play therapy Facebook group where I get a lot of good um, information and stuff from. She shows a couple of different CBT techniques, worry stones, feelings bucket tossed, and uh, Tucker the turtle, which is a pretty popular one. And then there's a TED talk with Paris Goodyear Brown on trauma play, and she's a big CBT um, play therapy person. All right, if you have questions, please reach out to me or Dr. Hickman. Here are the references. Thanks for watching.